Uh, Jonathan is a policy wonk as well, uh, much more than I am. He was served as the administrator for Farm Service Agency in Washington, D.C. And then he spent some time in the Senate as a, what was your title? Chief Counsel. Chief Counsel. Nice title, by the way. <laughs> Chief Counsel uh, with uh, Senator Stabenow. Uh, and he helped put together a lot of the backbones. Oh, yeah. I saw, sorry about that. <laughs> he helped put together a lot of the backbones of farm policy that is there today. Here's the thing about Jonathan. Uh, though you might know which side of the aisle he comes from, as best as I can tell, and this is an important thing when you work in the kind of business that I do and on campus, you don't want to show it. Uh, and you want to be really, really clear, of one, about where it was to begin with, and that you don't show a bias when you, when you put forth how the programs work uh, and the content you're doing. Um, I was a little scared when Jonathan came on thinking, holy smokes, uh, he might, he might, uh, because it's hard not to, but he might, and he doesn't. I've talked to him enough about farm policy that he does not, maybe every now and then, but uh, for the most part, you're not going to know it. Uh, he knows these commodity programs inside and out. So we just passed a farm bill, the 2014 bill. Uh, up front, I will let you know a couple things. Your commodity decision for crop insurance that you're going to make now, that you're making right now, no impact no impact on that decision. So make that decision however you're going to, going to make it, and I can talk to you a little bit about that. I don't know whether you're going to pass some of Gary Schnitke's thoughts on. I think he probably will. You've got other decisions that are going to come up, and they're going to come up really quickly, and they will have an impact on the crop you're putting in the ground now, or shortly. So they will have an impact on the 2014 crop. Jonathan Koppis is the policy specialist at the University of Illinois. I've talked to a lot of policy folks. He's as good as anybody I've talked to. And I'm not saying that because he's now from the U of I, uh, because I've talked to just a lot. If I call, I usually get to talk to somebody. Uh, and Jonathan does a great job. Please give Jonathan Koppis a nice, warm welcome. <laughs> One other note about Jonathan. You have his PowerPoint presentation in front of you, so you can follow along. The PowerPoint presentation is the white staple sheet. Jonathan, they're all yours. Thank you, Todd, and uh, thanks for having me out here today. I look forward to trying to uh, <clears throat> give you some, maybe clear the mud a little bit of what's coming up in the Farm Bill or what we've got in the Farm Bill and what, what's facing you all in the coming months. Uh, Todd made a good point, and there, there are two key issues or two key points I want to make right off, the, right off the bat. Number one, everything I'm talking about in this PowerPoint, everything I'll talk about today, is based on the statute, the language, the bill that just passed. We are still in a wait-and-see mode for quite a few of the technical details that will have to be worked out uh, by the Farm Service Agency in the implementation process and the reg writing. So we'll update information as we go. What you have in front of you today is what we know today based on the bill that passed and was signed into law. The second issue, and Todd uh, hit on it exactly right, while there are decisions, and this is complicated and it's, it's a bit complex, and the decisions all start for the 2014 crop year when it comes to Title I commodity programs, you can relax a little bit. Number one, we're not going to see these regulations for a while. In fact, I think the Secretary of Agriculture just last week said sometime this fall. We're not making these decisions today. We're not making them tomorrow. More importantly, these decisions, while they apply for the commodity programs, do not impact 2014 crop insurance. So just kind of keep that in mind that, that you've got time. We can work through this. We can learn through this because it is complicated. Louder. Um, okay, so with that, you've got, the, uh, you've got the PowerPoint slides in front of you. I'm going to run through these quickly and, and, and hopefully leave as enough time as possible for some questions. Um, but as we know, this bill, is, it took a while to get done. We have some complexity that, that has come out of that. So bear with me a little bit because uh, it is, without a doubt, um, a lot more complex than what you're used to. Right off the bat, the one thing you guys probably all know Direct payments are gone. There will be no direct payments for the 2014 crop year. Those are out. Uh, the counter cyclical program, the acre program, the SURE program, none of those are in place. We have instead 
a suite of programs with new acronyms, new names, but some familiar aspects. So we're going to run through those. One other upfront note, the marketing assistance loan program that's been there for many, many years, basically as it was in the 2008 Farm Bill, is continued for corn and soybeans and wheat. So no real changes in marketing assistance loans. Uh, of course, those loan rates are very low, $1.95, I think, for corn, 5 bucks for soybeans. So we'll kind of hope we don't even have to talk about the loan rates because we don't want to get down that way. And based on the earlier panel, I think uh, we got good information on that. Uh, the other key thing, there's a new crop insurance product, the Supplemental Coverage Option, SCO. You may have heard about that. It is not in place for this year. SCO will be in place as at the earliest for the 2015 year, crop year. So SCO, stay tuned on that one as we, as we learn more. Uh, also, payment limits and eligibility requirements. Um, just two quick notes on that one. You've got $125,000 overall cap on payments out of Title I. That now includes marketing loan gains and LDPs. So should you get LDPs, that will count against what you can get in the price or revenue programs. That's $125 cap. You can double with a spouse. Uh, those those um, stay the same. The adjusted gross income, in the past you've had to deal with a farm, non-farm adjusted gross income. That's been done away with. We have a single AGI requirement. $900,000. If the last three years you have averaged over $900,000 in adjusted gross income, you are ineligible for payments in the 2014 crop year. Uh, so with that, let's get into <clears throat> the series of decisions that you will have facing you for this crop year. And again, all of these will apply to this crop year. You're not going to sign up before you plant. You may not sign up before you harvest but these will apply retroactively then to the crop that you're going to put in the ground this spring. So kind of keep that in mind. And we'll go through these in more detail. But first, there's a decision of whether to retain or reallocate the base acres on your farm. All of these programs pay on base acres now. So there's a decision to retain or reallocate. The second one is a decision to update the payment yields used for the price program on the farm. And then the third set of elections or decisions you have to make are amongst these programs. There's the Price Loss Coverage Program, PLC. There's the Agriculture Risk Coverage Program at the county level, ARC County, and the Agriculture Risk Coverage Program at the individual farm level. You will decide among those three programs, and we'll go through those details here. So first on base acres. Again, all the programs, PLC, ARC County, and ARC Individual, they operate on base acres. None of these are dealing with the planted acres. It's with the historical base on the farm. So you can reallocate that base, but first and foremost, you cannot increase base. You cannot add base on your farm. What you can do is reallocate the base that's already there to make it more, uh, if you will, more aligned with what you've been planting in the, in the most recent years. If you reallocate, then it becomes the proportion of planted acres from 2009 to 2012 crop years. So just below this is a very quick example. If you got 100 base acres, let's say 55 of those are corn base, 35 are soybean base, and 10 wheat base. From 2009 to 12, you've planted on average 75 corn and 25 soybeans. If you choose to reallocate, your base acres now are 75-25. Right? You still got 100. You just reshuffle that go how that goes. Uh, some of the earliest, early analysis out of uh, the uh, economists at, at, the, at the university is looking at, of course, uh, the more corn acres, the more corn base at this point. It's probably going to be the decision you want to really consider strongly. Um, but we're still running through all that. So that's decision number one. Decision number two is your payment yields. Payment yields are only used for the price loss coverage program. Okay, that's a price, a fixed price based program. It pays on the difference of the price. We'll go through the details. But it also uses the payment yields. You currently have payment yields on your farm. They were used for the counter cyclical program. So that counter cyclical payment can be updated. You will have, that, you will have a chance to re uh, um, configure that to update it to 90% to of the average yields for that crop on the farm from 2008 to 2012. You don't have to do it. You can keep them exactly as they were for the counter cycle program under 2008. But there is an opportunity. There will be a one-time opportunity to update those payment yields. Now the third series of choices. This is the program choice. And the thing to keep in mind about this is you're going to make this choice one time. 
you're gonna make it for the 2014 crop year and it's going to stick with that farm through the end of this farm bill right now scheduled for 2018 this is an irrevocable choice on these programs once you choose a program you cannot change that choice you cannot go pick another program or find a, a different setup there's also language in there and we'll have to see how FSA use it or implements it that will preclude a reconstitution of your farm in order to get around the decision or the election you've made. So for each program crop on farm, you can choose either the price loss coverage program or the county ARC program, the county revenue program. Or for all of the program crops on the farm, you can choose the individual ARC program. The individual program is an all-in program. If you choose it, all the crops on your farm, all the crops you have base acres on the farm are included in that, and you'll see the calculation as we go through this. So it's possible you could have, you could choose county arc for one commodity and PLC for another commodity. It's possible to mix those two. It's not possible to mix the individual arc choice. The thing about this decision, we're on base acres. This means you're involving your landlords. This means the owners of the land, the owners of the base will be very important in the decision of what programs um, will be on that farm. It pays on base acres and it'll stay with that farm most likely. That means the landowner then will have that program no matter who the tenant is down the road and they'll have that program for the life of this farm bill. There's a default situation. If you and the landlord, are, if you guys cannot make an, a unanimous decision for the 2014 crop year and no decisions made, what happens is you lose payments for any opportunity to get a payment for 2014. So you're out in 2014. The second part of that is you are automatically enrolled all crops in the price loss coverage program. So there's a big motivator, particularly looking at the numbers we're looking at for 2014, to get that decision, to get a unanimous decision, get your landlords involved, get everybody involved that has an interest in that farm, and get a unanimous decision on what to do for the 2014 crop. So let's look at the programs real quick. The first one we're gonna look at is the price loss coverage program. If you remember the counter cyclical payments, this will look very familiar. It's the exact same type of program. The only difference at this point is we have an increase in the prices used. They're no longer called target prices, they're called reference prices, and they're higher than they were from the last farm bill. They're printed on in the slides right there. As you see them, corn's at 370 a bushel, uh, soybeans is at $8.40. So this program triggers a payment any time the market year average price. That's the 12 month average price for the prices received by farmers in that 12 month marketing year. Any time that's lower than the reference price, you trigger a payment based on the difference. Just like the countercycle program now. As you guys probably all know very well, the marketing year average of the 12 month marketing year for corn and soybeans will begin in September of 2014 for the 14 marketing year. It'll end in August of 2015. Payments will not come out until October of 2015 for the 2014 crop. So the shift in the, in the year uh, continues with this program. Price loss coverage then, the difference between the reference price and the market year average price is your payment rate. That's paid, then your payment on the farm would be the payment rate, that difference multiplied by the payment yield. Remember, you could have updated that payment yield to 90% of the most recent year's average yields. You multiply that then by 85%. So it's paid out on 85% of the base acres for that crop on the farm. And you'll see a very simple example if, uh, in the next slide. If the marketing year average price for 2014 becomes 355 for corn off 370, that's 15 cents an acre. Let's say you've updated yields 150 bushels an acre, so the payment would be a thousand, would be just a little over $1,900, $1,913. That's 15 cents times 150 bushels times 85% of 100 base acres for the crop. So that's PLC. Now we enter the world of the revenue programs, and these are much more complex, so we'll bear with me as we try to work through the calculation and understand it. I'm not, there's no way. I haven't found a way yet to make this more simple to understand, but we'll work on that too. Um, so the first one is the county ARC program. These programs, again, use revenue. The county uses a county revenue calculation. That's county yields multiplied by national prices. So the first thing we do is we have to establish what's called the benchmark revenue. That uses the five-year Olympic average 
county yields times a five-year Olympic average national average prices, the most recent five crop years. An Olympic average means you drop the highest year of each and the lowest year of each. So your highest yields, your lowest yields, your highest prices, your lowest prices are dropped out of the, the equation and average across. The guarantee then is set at 86% of that benchmark number. And I have an example uh, to run through, you can see it. Then you calculate an actual revenue. That'll be the county yield for the crop year, 2014, and the 12, year, 12 month market year average price gets you an average, an actual revenue for the crop year. The difference is your payment rate. Actual minus the guarantee, there's a limit. This program cannot pay above 10% or cannot pay on more than 10% of that benchmark. So it's capped. In essence, this covers from 86 to 76 of the county revenue, 86 to 76, so high end coverage. The payment for this one then is on 85% of the base acres as well. So similar to the PLC, you're 85% of the base acres for that commodity. If you go to the next slide, you'll see a benchmark revenue calculation for county ARC for corn in McLean County, Illinois. 2009, 10, 11, 12, and 13 are the most recent five years. So two features that you need to know that happen in this calculation, we have plugs. Any year in which, any of those past five years in which the yield is less than 70% of the transitional yield, you use 70% of the transitional yield plugged in there. Any year in that five-year calculation where the national average price is below the reference price, you plug in the reference price. And we actually see that one, 2009 was uh, 355, the market year average. So you plug 370 in for the 355. And as you see, the ones that are bolded through there are the ones that are used in the Olympic, in the Olympic uh, calculation. So you've got 370, 518, 622, 689, and 450. You only use the 2013, 11, and 2010 prices to get your Olympic, five-year Olympic average. County yields, again, you're only using, uh, you're dropping the highest and lowest. In this case, you're using 2009, 10, and 11 yields. That gets you a benchmark revenue of $910 an acre for corn in McLean County. 86% of that is $783. That's your guarantee. So let's assume that 2014 market year average price for corn is $3.90. We'll take a trend line yield for the county at 180 bushels an acre. That would calculate to $702 of actual revenue. Compare that to your benchmark, compare that to your guarantee. What you see then, the guarantee is $783, and the maximum payment per acre that could happen is $91. That's 10% of the 910 revenue. In this case, what we see would be an example, in this example would be $81 an acre would be the payment. And that would be paid on 85% of the base acres for that commodity. So if you had 100 base acres of corn, that's a $6,852 payment, 85% of the base. So the difference between the five-year Olympic averages that set the benchmark and the actual revenue triggers your payment and triggers your amount of your payment. That's county ARC. If you want to see soybeans, uh, there's, a, there's an example of soybeans as well. So I'm going to jump to the individual ARC program, unless there's any major confusion right now. Yes, sir. But you have to say you get $80 an acre, but that's all predicated on the $120,000, $125,000 cap. Right. So that $81 an acre will cap out at $125,000 for you, the individual. So you cannot get more than $125,000 in payments, but it's still at 80. If, this, if these numbers were the ones that were to be a 390 price and 180 trend yield, or 180 yield for that county, remember we're using county yields, national prices, your payment rate would be $81 an acre. But yes, the payment limits could come into play if you're above $125,000 in payments. All inclusive, all your payments, would be summed up and they cannot exceed 125,000. If you're farming corn, wheat, soybean, if you've got a farm down in the south, it's cotton. <coughs> yeah, unless you're growing peanuts, peanuts is the only one that has a separate payment limit. The rest of it applies for all. 
So that's the county ARC program. The next one is even more complex. It's the individual ARC program. And before we even get into the calculations of how this works, I need to make a couple notes up front to you. First and foremost, remember this is an all-in program. If you sign up for individual ARC, all the crops on your farm have to be in that program. You cannot use this with the other programs. And the reason is because it operates on the sum of all of those crops. You're actually using multiple crops to calculate your revenue numbers. The calculations are also based on the producer's share of production on all farms in the state that are enrolled in individual ARC. So you, the producer, multiple farms in ARC, they're calculating your share of each of those for your payment. A lot of details will be worked on, out on that by FSA to see how that operates. Another note is that the crop year, so the 2014 crop year for individual ARC, what you plant in that crop year does have an impact on how the payments, how the benchmark, how the revenue numbers are calculated. It's used to weight those calculated numbers. So, and we'll see this in an example. But in, in essence, what you plant in 2014 will determine, will, will change your numbers even in the historic five years, because what you're trying to do is compare apples to apples. So you don't want somebody triggering revenue payments because they just didn't plant soybeans one year and the revenue dropped out based on that. This means if you didn't plant soybeans, then your calculations are going to change. So certainly complicated. So let's walk through the calculations for individual art. Oh, finally, one last note. Individual art pays on 65% of the base acres for all the commodities. Again, we're summing this up across all commodities. PLC is on 85% of the base for the commodity. County ARC is on 85% of the base for the commodity. PLC is 65% of all the commodity base on the farm. So the calculation. <clears throat> we start with a benchmark. I always have to laugh at this. This one gets a little, this gets a little thick as we go through it. So we start again with a benchmark, okay? You're going to calculate revenues for the last five years, prices times yields. Now we're using individual farm level yields for the last five years. Again, we're using national prices. You, ca you calculate five revenue numbers. Then you take the Olympic average of those five revenue numbers, drop in the highest revenue and the lowest revenue. Again, you're using reference prices as a plug, and you're also using the 70% T yield plug on yields. Once you have the Olympic average revenue, then you weight them for all commodities. So if you plant six, in the, in the example, we go 60 uh, out of 100 base, we go 60 corn, 40 soybeans. So you actually use 0 0.6, 0 0.4 as the weighting on those revenue numbers in the calculation. Once you've weighted them, that gives you your benchmark revenue. Your actual revenue calculated the same way. You're going to take the yield for the farm for the commodity times the national price, you're going to add them together, but you're going to weight those when you add them together based on what you planted. That becomes your actual revenue. The difference between the, ben the difference then, or the benchmark you times by 86% again is our guarantee. So the difference between your guarantee and your actual is your payment rate. Similar as what we saw on County Arc. So you got 86% of the benchmark, which is the weighted sum of the five year Olympic average revenues. That's your payment rate the guarantee minus the, re the actual, not to exceed 10% of the benchmark again. Got, again, we're at 86 to 76. Then that payment rate's made on 65% of all the base acres on the farm, all commodities. So if you skip ahead, then we have an individual ARC calculation using the exact same numbers as we use in the county to make it easier for everybody, including me, whose math is always challenged. So we're using county yields this is not a farm yield, all right? We're still going to use the county yields as representing the farm yield. In, in actuality, you would be using your farm's yields in the individual calculation. So in this case, now you go across. Before you go down, you go across. Yield times price to get revenue for each of the five years. Again, you see the plug on 370 corn for 2009. Calculate across the revenues. Now you get your Olympic average revenue. Dropping out the one, the highest and the lowest, gives you a Olympic average corn revenue of $826. For soybeans, it's $687. So 
So going into the example now, let's say in 2014, we use this example, we got 100 base acres of corn and soybeans, we plant 60 corn, 40 soybeans. So now we weight that number. Your benchmark revenue becomes $770. That's 0.6 times the 826 Olympic average and 0.4 times the 687 Olympic soybean average. Your guarantee is 86% of that, that's the 662. Using the same numbers as before, 390 corn, 180 bushels, trend yield, 965 soybeans and 56 bushels, your actual revenue would be 637, weighted individual revenue. The difference is $25. That's your payment rate. The maximum in this example would be $77, 10% of the benchmark of 770. Should that payment happen, it'd be $1,630, basically because we're paying on 65% of all the base. Piece of cake, right? Everybody's got it down, Pat. So just a couple initial conclusions to kind of help uh, explain what we're seeing a little bit and maybe answer the, some, of the initial, some of the questions that are coming up right off the bat. So one of the first things we look at is, and this is, you can trust these numbers much better. This is, this is, these are the economists doing a lot of uh, modeling on this and trying to understand what it'll pay out. The first thing they see, is that presuming, presuming trend yields for corn and soybeans, county ARC in 2014 would reach the cap, the 10% cap in most Midwestern counties at prices well above the reference price, 370 for corn, 840 for soybeans, but below where USDA is projecting prices to be. So what you see, particularly in the county program for the Midwest, is this is gonna be, it's gonna be very much based on price movements right now. What we're, we've got high prices in the five-year calculation, low prices in the coming years. So what we're seeing is this is going to pay out and hit maximum even above, even before you get to the reference price. So uh, the individual arc also likely to be smaller payments. That makes sense. We're paying on 65% of the base. So a couple other quick conclusions. At a 370 reference prices, if the prices stay above it, county arc will provide assistance with the price decline. PLC will not. To put this in very rough terms, if you, if you uh, think of, of gambling, 370s are over under. PLC only pays when you're under 370. If you think prices are going to be above 370, PLC is not going to do anything. It's only when you're below 370 that triggers a payment. The ARC programs, because they use that five-year historic average, will pick up these more recent high prices and set levels a little bit higher. Now, the difference is, that's a five-year moving average. Over the course of time, that guarantee could get lower if prices go down and stay down. So really this becomes, your decision becomes how bullish or bearish are you on the market over the next five years. If you think prices are gonna tank and, and stay down, and one of the estimates we have here is that if you think it's $3 or less, PLC might, not saying it will, it might provide more assistance. What it's likely to do is to provide assistance in years four and five if it stays down there, where the R calculation will move you out because it'll readjust to that market price. For soybeans, nobody's predicting the PLC program, the re nobody's predicting anywhere near that, that 840, so there's no expectation that PLC will pay for soybeans. So again, the big thing to keep in mind is right now, looking at this, because we have high prices in the last five years, is what are your price expectations going forward? How's your, what's your marketing strategy? What do you need to see in your bottom lines, in your farm operations, and how you work through those calculations? Um, so with that, I guess maybe we'll take some questions on uh, if there's anything that, that is uh, a, little bit, a little bit unclear. Again, there's a lot of time, and if I can put a plug in for the Farm Doc and Farm Doc Daily team, we're working on calculators. We're working on more and more analysis and postings for this. So stay tuned. You've got time to try to figure this out. OK. Eyes glazed over, I know, a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the short version. Um, Jackie Vakes, Matt Bennett, and Pete Manhart, make sure I've got this right. You've probably heard it too. Uh, so here's the short version as it comes from Schnitke, from Gary. Uh, and we had him in Clinton, Illinois, last week. Um, we don't know who ARC individual was written for. Probably not you. Dismiss it. If you think the price of corn over the next five years will average below three bucks, three dollars, take PLC. 
If you think it will average above 370, take Arc County and crop insurance. So let me boil it down for you into two sentences. Take Arc County, take crop insurance. Is that right? Did I get it right, Pete? Yep. Let me check. Where's Matt? Yep. And Jackie. I got it right? Okay. And one quick note on this. There are no linkages or requirements. You do not have to be in one of these programs for crop insurance. You do not have to have crop insurance to be in one of these programs. They're separate. They're on base acres. So what you do, I think, to Todd's point, what you do on crop insurance, you do on crop insurance. This is right. separate. Yeah, and the reason you take crop insurance, is remember, is because some people are going to look at the 520 on the ARC and say, why do I need crop insurance? Why do I? Because he told you already, what's it going to pay out? It doesn't pay out the whole thing. The maximum payout is 10%. Of is 10%. So he gave you the maximum payout for the year was 81 bucks. So you have to take crop insurance. So you can't just take the program. You have to take crop insurance with it. Okay, John. Oh, but the question in the back was, when does the decision have to be made? The answer is, we, we don't, don't know yet. We don't know yet. It, it, that'll be determined by FSA when the regulations come out. Right Sometime now, we're talking summer. about the fall. Yeah, summer or fall, right? Fall now. Yeah, because it, it applies to this crop year, so it's, got to, it's going to have to be made sometime soon. John. Uh, so he wants to know, do I have to sign up for a program? What happens if I don't sign up for a program? Well, I know what's going to happen because they're going to tell you you have, have to go into that program. As you said, basically, no decision. Right. That so that's, program. you don't have, again, this is, this is a commodity support program. There's nothing requiring you to sign up for it. The kicker is if you decide you want it and you don't sign up in 14, you're automatically in the price loss coverage program. Yeah. So, you cannot, you cannot yeah. wait it out and see in 2015 or 2016 yeah. what you want to do. By that point, you're going to automatically be pushed into PLC. Even if you don't like commodity programs, you don't sign up, you're still in one. PLC. So I'm being forced into a program whether I want to You will be in, you're, well, you still your farm will be in a program, you won't be in a program. I mean, so this is an all, all. It's all in, yes. So there's no choice to Okay. So this is different. So let me. This is different, right? Let me adjust what you said just a little bit. You don't have to sign up for this at any point in time, ever, right? This this is not. Nobody's saying you. you nobody's going to force you to take the payments if they're making payments. No, yeah, what happens yeah. is if you decide you want to be in the program down the road, you've only got one option yeah. after this crop year. John, here's here's the difference. You you don't have to be in the program. You do not have to be in the program. Your farm does have to be in the program. And if a new landlord or you sell that farm, that farm is in the program as PLC because you didn't bother to sign up. But you're not in the program. What I'm saying is this is a fundamentally changed... Right. I, I understand you're arguing that the government's in. I'm just saying this is the way that the numbers are... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're oh, who signs up? The landlord or the tenant? So that's a great question. The first part of the answer is the regulations are going to have to determine exactly how that works. What the statute says is that the landlords and tenants have to agree on the decision. The statute says the producer makes the decision in agreement with the yeah. landlords and everybody else involved. So there's going to be some weird, yeah. they're going to have to figure that out. So Likely that's part of the decision between landlord and tenant who has the signature authority, for example, and things like that. Yeah. But the landlord's going to have to be a part of that decision because right. it's on the base acres for the farm. And because it's on FSA farm, you can actually have some farms where you're in PLC, some farms where you're in FSA, but everybody who's actively involved in the farm has to agree on which program. Who files? Who files? Who files? Landlord. That kind of the same, depending on how they set it up in the regulations, the statute says producer, make, 
producers make unanimous decision. That, that term includes landowners. So it's going to be whoever's going into the FSA office in general. Uh, that, that's going to be partially the, the decision between the landlord and the tenant. Oh. Who's got signature authority on the farm? Well, I've got pieces. something really bad at this point that I need to have you fill out. This, you're all grumbling and ready to go. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to fill out um, two, the two little yellow sheets that are on your, <laughs> this is a bad time to ask how many acres, uh, isn't it? Uh, we kind of, we kind of, in order to make revenue beyond what we ask you for as our, our listeners, uh, we do sell underwrites um, uh, from time to time, and those, those folks want to know who we're talking to. So when you fill out the, the golden colored sheet, um, we'd like to know kind of how many acres and a couple of other questions there so that when we go to the underwriters, we can at least tell them about our listenership. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with you, so you can fill it out and keep it with you uh, and bring it to the lunch line, and you're going to turn it in with your yellow ticket. The ticket, by the way, you have with you, that little ticket that we gave you, the little yellow ticket, that's your lunch ticket, so you're going to hand that in. And then uh, the, you, there's another one, Jackie Vakes from Stuart Peterson handed out. There's a smaller from Stuart Peterson yellow um, card and if you want to be entered in the drawing, I think Jackie's got a uh, a drill that she's given a power drill of some sort. I think it says it right there on it. If you want to be entered in that, then take that up and you're going to turn that into the basket too. But fill all of those out uh, and you're going to turn them all in at the same time. Okay, next question here. Oh, right, because he didn't talk so. So this does not affect 2014, your crop insurance decisions, the commodity program decision, but it could impact the 2015. Well, the one impact on crop insurance of this decision, whatever crop is in county ARC or ARC or any, if you enroll your farm in individual ARC, you are ineligible for SCO for that crop or that farm. So SCO is a new crop insurance program. It's a county, it's an area wide. You put it on top of your individual coverage. So it starts at 86%, you all the way down to wherever your individual coverage. Obviously if you're at 85%, that's kind of a small coverage band. Just but 1%. you cannot get both ARC and SCO. So that's the one issue in crop insurance going forward. And that's as we figure out how those will play. Yeah. But, but SCO is a crop insurance program resets on prices every year. So it's different, you'll pay a premium. Uh, the, the government will subsidize 65% of the premium for SEO. So there are some, some differences. But that, that'll, SEO we don't anticipate till 2015, but the 2014 crop year decision on Title I could impact your eligibility for SEO. Can I ask a question about SEO? Because we were trying to figure out who that program was written for. Remember, if you're at 85%, most of you would be in your crop insurance, it'll pay up to 86%. So it pays one extra percent. And we're trying to figure out who it was written for. It was put in by Roberts, right? And so I, I'm assuming it was for the irrigators, and they would because, and, but why? I, I so mean, do the they buy 50% and then they need yeah. to buy SEO? Is that what the happened? The original idea came out of Texas. Uh-huh, um, <laughs> okay, yeah. And Senator Roberts, particularly uh, some of the western wheat growing areas in which they, can't, they say they are unable to afford above, say, 70% coverage, so this gives them that Area right, wide. because they're in their marginal areas, the crop insurance costs a lot cost of money, so they buy a 50%, especially if they're on the irrigation, and then they buy the SEO, which is actuarially probably correct for their farm, I think. Because it's county. County, uh, and then they'll be more likely to be able to use the insurance programs. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Other questions? I know there were a couple of others out here. Yep. So the question is, and I'll, I'll answer part of it, but I don't know why you wouldn't, about updating, because you're going to update yields and base acres. They're individual decisions. You can update one or both. Uh, Schnitke said the other night, uh, on your base acres, uh, whichever, if your current base acres for corn is higher, if your old base acres, hmm, you the base more. acres you now have is higher than your last, than your last set, 
I got to think about how to say this correctly. Whatever gets you more corn base. Whichever right. gets you more corn base, that's the one you're going to do. So if the old corn, if the old base is more corn acres than the new base, stick with the old base. The question then was on yield. Yeah. So the payment yield, so first off, it's only used for the price loss coverage program. That's the only time the payment yield is used. There is an outstanding question that will have to be answered by the department and the regulations about who all can do it. I don't know why you wouldn't update your payment yields if you can, just because that now is the record on the farm. So it would seem to get to 90% of the most recent yields, you'd update it even if you're not going to take the PLC program. But the caveat being we don't know if, if FSA is going to limit that, that decision. Right now, that's been something that is being discussed. We haven't heard a final response. Um, you, the only reason you wouldn't, frankly, is if your yields have been lower over those years than what your payment yield is, which is, I would imagine, highly, highly unlikely in this part of the country. Oh, if you're at 100% corn with APH, would this be a case where you'd use ARC individual? Is that the question? Yeah. And that's a good, it's a good question. You'd want to, you'd want to run some examples on your farm and run the numbers. I mean, the first thing right off the bat is you're already get, you're, you're giving up 20%, 20 points on the base. So you're, you're going to have a smaller payment than county ARC, particularly when it's prices triggering everything. The whole, the individual ARC program is really designed for that where you've got a lot of yield variability. Um, and then it just yeah. it costs so much more from the federal government standpoint that that's why you you've got kind of a penalty now um, or a differential between that. So, I mean, it might be possible in 100% corn. I haven't I haven't seen any examples of that. You'd want to run the numbers to see for yourself. And I think the second question the gentleman had about use of APH, good question. I don't know if um, I don't know how FSA what they're going to use for the yields when you report that for the five year Olympic for the individual, that'll be determined by, by the agency when they come up with the regs. All up, all done? All right, remember that the guys at the farm doc team, the ag economist upstairs, and I'll be reporting on this on the air pretty consistently as we get into the summer and late fall and you have these decisions, uh, they may discover at some point something that changes the two, two simple sentences, take our, take, crop, take, take our county, take crop insurance. Um, so, so while that's, that's today and unlikely to change because I'm sure they've run enough numbers to know at this point, um, but they may find something later on that you need to know about. So don't take it as written in stone, but it's pretty close. Um, this decision will need to be made sometime in late summer probably or early fall. I'll try to make sure you hear about it on the air. Come back to the farm doc site. They'll have the calculators there. You can put your own numbers in and see what might work differently for you on your farms. Give Jonathan Coppice a nice round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep.